Welcome to Fresh Outlook. I'm Frank Cipolla. We are pleased you are joining us today. This could be a bumpy week on Wall Street. A government shutdown looms Wednesday, while the Fed also meets with an eye toward raising interest rates for the first time in about eight years. And there are predictions on way or what may or may not happen in 2016 as well. We are joined in this segment by Jason Reddish. He is co-owner of Total Merchant Resources in Piscataway, New Jersey. That's not Jason, is the other gentleman. There he is. He lends money to small businesses. Jason is also a former mortgage broker. Also with us is Steve Kalajian. He's with financial technology company Novera. And from our DC bureau is CEO of Baton Investing, Matthew Tiermond. He's also the deputy uh, director of uh, transparency. Actually, Matthew is right here uh, next to me. And in our studio in Washington, D.C. is Phil Ash. Phil Ash is joining us, and that's uh, Matthew. Gentlemen, we're all on the set finally. Let's discuss what's happening this week. First of all, the government shutdown, at the very least, was moved till Wednesday. Uh, there was a continuing uh, resolution to continue it. You know, every time we get to this sort of deadline, it's not a good idea for the government to even discuss this because it gives the market jitters, doesn't it? Absolutely. In what way? Well, I think Paul Ryan, being the new Speaker of the House, is really trying his best. Mm -hmm to keep the government open yes. and that was his promise which is a good from, idea uh, <laughs> it's definitely a good idea but what happened this week um the high equity markets took a real big beating mm -hmm. and that was a scary thing i think carl icon spoke about it yesterday and he called it a, a powder keg ready to explode uh, china still looms yes um and we definitely have a serious problem with oil uh, we're going to talk about oil in just a second. Matthew, the, the, uh, even the, the specter of a government shutdown, again, I mentioned, gives Wall Street jitters. But it also doesn't instill confidence in the rest of the world, does it? Well, I think at this point, the uh, political scenario is such that we're not going to have any uh, Ted Cruz-style dynamics that are going to th really threaten a, what do you mean? Where uh, a, a bona fide buster? government mm -hmm. shutdown. I think that there are enough uh, within the Republican caucus, both in the House and the Senate, that are committed to working in tandem <coughs> to keep the government going and spending more money. Uh, I look at the, uh, the equity markets. I don't think the equity markets are pricing in any risk of D.C.-style uh, legislative risk, uh, the risk they're pricing in is quite simply interest rate hikes. So what you're saying is they see that there will be a resolution one way or another, yeah, maybe a long-term budget. No, I think that they're just going to kick the can. And you think so? Yeah. yeah Steve, Steve I agree would you agree? Matthew, I, I agree with Matthew. And when I mean, you say kick the can, it could be another three months, six well, months, whatever it is. You know, since I've been around, they keep raising, raising the debt ceiling. Right. And, and the markets, I agree with Matthew, don't really factor that in as well. I think interest rates, the decline in oil, the decline in the uh, China stock market down 2.6 percent this week really caused uh, a negative impact on the market. So I don't think that the that the budget is uh, really uh, anything to worry about for the market. Phil right Ash, you're in Washington D.C. You're at the very heart of mm. power right there. What do you see happening? Will it be a one-year continuing resolution, or maybe a budget that lasts a couple of years? Keep in mind as well that it's a presidential election year next year, and, <coughs> and they certainly don't want to deal with this during the campaign. Phil, yeah, I, I, uh, I wouldn't begin to opine on that. I, uh, I certainly don't know what, uh, what Congress is going to do, nor does anybody else. But uh, you know, I, I think, as the other gentleman said, the, uh, the rate hikes are uh, certainly factored in already. What's not factored in, perhaps, would be some more aggressive guidance that the Fed potentially could offer, and hopefully doesn't. All right, so what happens now? What, let's, let's get your best guess from our expert panel here. Uh, do we get one of these six months uh, or, or maybe a post-election day 2016 budget and we'll deal with it after election day? I, I, to me, at least, it, it seems as though they don't want to deal with this during a campaign. Would I be right? Jason, we'll start with you. It's a lose-lose on both sides. Um, and during an election, I mean, this is probably the worst time to deal with something like this one way or another because mm -hmm. the conservatives don't want the debt ceiling raised yeah, I, whatsoever. I, I agree. I mean, I think they're just going to kick the can down. You know, they're not, I, don't, I don't see them really doing anything in, in 2016. Well, didn't we have Paul Ryan coming in talking about uh, it was going to be his way, otherwise he wasn't going to be speaker, and one of the things he wanted was some sort of uh, uh, consensus behind him. Doesn't he have more power than John Boehner would say going into this negotiation? Well, I think he's got a lot of political capital coming in because he is, is still, the Senate and the House are both dominated by establishment GOP members. The uh, Freedom Caucus, the Tea Party groups, they are very, very small segment right now. But vocal. 
Vocal, yes, and they drive a lot of press, but they do not have the votes to shift the narrative at Absolutely. the moment. But the issue really is the Federal Reserve. I, I disagree with our panelists in D.C. I don't think this interest rate hike is priced in at all. I do think they're going to raise. It's the first time in many, many years, and the entire forward curve of the cost of capital is going to shift dramatically upward. The equity markets haven't priced that in at all. We're maybe, what, 5 7 8% off historic highs. I'm thinking that we're going to have a, a 15 20% correction in Q1. Yeah, but can I say one yeah. thing? I think what they never speak about in the media is the fact that if interest rates do start rising, the banks will get more liquid because they'll have more incentives to lend. And that's something that nobody ever really speaks about. If the banks start lending again, that's strong I, for the economy. See, see I, I disagree. Zero percent was the best scenario they were going to have. The discount window was the cheapest in history. They had unlimited capital that they could loan, and they loaned it to, to other banking industries, the financial sector. They did not <coughs> make retail loans. Mortgage applications are not up. Uh, I think that we're going to see the uh, entire debt profile of the country uh, really, really uh, uh, retract. Uh, there's going to be a lot less loaning going on, and it's going to be a major tailwind for the economy I think in there'll be less loaning if you stay at zero interest rates. Yeah. I think I, that I, right I, now you have a stock market. You really can't look at the Dow and say it's real. No. When it's based on you know, we've been oh, living eight, we've been living eight years on, on em empty carbs and cotton candy. Yeah. Right. And all of a sudden now the interest rates might go up. But I've talked with economic uh, experts and they say this is not the best time because the economy is not growing like it was even a couple of years ago. Steve. I, I, I agree. I mean, for seven years we were at zero percent interest rates. And I've, since January of this year, I've been calling for zero percent interest rates every time the Fed meets. And I don't see it. I'm probably in a minority group here. Um, if you look at since 2008, uh, we've had over 700 interest rate cuts by central banks around the world. And our GDP numbers aren't showing any growth mm -hmm. here. Our wage, and there's no wage inflation. We actually have deflation in commodity prices. Copper's down 25%. Oil is down 36 percent. Yesterday, when I left, I saw heating oil under a dollar 15 on the front month contract. Mm -hmm. Gasoline at a dollar 27 on the front month contract. So we see, I'm seeing deflation here. I'm not seeing any wage pressure. So. Yeah, call it crazy, but I'm in the minority here. I guess oh, I, I don't I agree, see interest I agree, rates. I agree with what you're saying. About Phil Ash in Washington D.C. What do you see with regard to the interest rates? Do we get a hike this week or not? Well, I think we do, but uh, you know, I mean that that is kind of the consensus opinion. But I certainly hope we don't. But uh, I think it's coming, and I think the markets have priced it in. But I don't have a crystal ball, and I'm not a market timer, and I don't think anybody successfully is over the long term. So, you know, I, I, I think it's, it's neither here nor there, and you just got to stick to your investing strategy for the long haul, which, you know, interest rates are going to impact uh, large caps predominantly, uh, more so than the small and the mid caps. Uh, and as the uh, interest rates do start to rise, and they do start to squeeze the earnings of the large caps, some of that capital presumably will migrate to the small and mid caps. Russell 2000 over the last five years is up only 40%, while the S&P is up about 60%. I'm looking for some of that capital to shift over to small and mid caps as now, interest rates do inevitably rise over the next few years. Phil, every indication from <laughs> Fed President Janet Yellen is, and panel is that there will be an interest rate sometime this week. Uh, one of the things you did in a previous life was own a mortgage company yeah and and you were you were uh, uh, making mortgages uh, for uh, people buying homes and such in addition to that you weren't CNBC Shark Tank That's where you correct. had to sell an idea to somebody how does Janet Yellen sell this to the general public that even though the economy is slowing it's a good idea that's a great question but she's not a salesman and I don't think that's her job I really think and this might sound naive of me but I do think she's bipartisan and I think she takes her her position very seriously but and what, I don't numbers, what numbers are she looking at right now? Uh, you know what she's looking so. at? Exactly. Uh, she's looking at consumer spending, which in October and November haven't, hasn't been that high since uh, 2011. Right. And, you know, if she does a 25 basis point one and done, we could still have a Santa Claus rally. Well, <laughs> you know, the, my, my philosophy is, is that you look at pending home sales, right, the gauge of the economy, not stagnant, at all, I mean, very, very below grade here. Right. Uh, new home sales can't push up a really kind of at mid-level point here. You know, the Federal Reserve, about two years ago, before Janet Yellen took office, the Federal Reserve's policy was when unemployment numbers were in the mid-8% level, that they stated that when unemployment got to 6.5%, they were going to start raising interest rates. Mm -hmm. Well, unemployment's now at 5%. Yes. So bottom line is, is that I don't know what they're looking at. I mean, to me, I don't well, see the, the pressures to raise interest rates. If now. I'm looking to buy a home or a car, and interest rates are now creeping up, won't, uh, won't that incentivize me to, to buy a car or a home now before it gets worse? 
Yes, and the fact that you have so much more money in your pocket to buy a car when oil's at $35 a barrel Which we and haven't gas even prices on, are breaking yeah. to it. I know I brought <laughs> yeah. it up earlier. I mean, that's going to fuel, I think, auto buying, and people are going to drive more because they don't have to spend $90 to fill up their car anymore. Phil Ash in Washington, D.C., would you agree with that? <coughs> would that spur, uh, as an investment uh, person, would that spur your clients to say, I better do something now before interest rates go even higher? Yeah, I think there's certainly people who are already in the mode of uh, planning a purchase that would accelerate that purchase. Uh, is oil going to go lower, though? Mm -hmm. um, uh, you know, I know you're talking about interest rates, but with regards to oil, you know, have we seen the bottom on oil? Mm -hmm. I, I don't know about that. Uh, I certainly wouldn't try to catch a falling knife here. Uh, you know, OPEC has uh, completely lost control of their pricing power. You know, Saudi Arabia has gone a little bit renegade. You've got Russia, you've got Venezuela, Iran coming back into the market. Uh, there's, there's a lot of supply out there. And, uh, you know, I, I think oil prices have not bottomed necessarily. Mm -hmm. and, and I would agree with that. We also have all the fracking we do in the United States and all the gas. oil and natural gas we're producing now. So where is the bottom on oil? <laughs> I think it's a lot lower than here. I think the entire commodity complex, I agree that we are in a deflationary mm. uh, period again. Uh, so I don't see that this interest rate hike is going to be uh, sustained and really going to uh, see multiple hikes uh, consecutively. I think they'll probably cut back to zero in the next year as we enter a real recession. So what is but what, oil, what, I think, what, gets halved from here. What I mean, is you the have Iran coming online, half. which is so massive. Oh, actually, there's a member firm that actually called back in April, May. Um, for oil to be 20 in the next five years. Yeah. So, um, yeah, that's, that's my call. And it wasn't too long ago, it was above 100. It was yeah. 98 back in January. No, what, what would be the, uh, the idea of, of raising it uh, a quarter of a percentage point, the interest rate, optics. and then bring it back down optics. six months uh, from optics. now? Optics, just, to, just to show that we are in control. In, in control and in a quote unquote strengthening economy, which is a fallacy. We're not. The right. unemployment rate is a pseudo number. Uh, labor force participation's on 30, 40 year lows. Uh, we're not producing higher levels of GDP <coughs> ex government spending. So the real economy is not growing at all, but we are trying to show the world that we are not going to engage in the same currency war that China, the ECB, and Japan so are from in. So, what I'm understanding, if I'm understanding you correctly, this is just for show? Yes. Did I you agree? I, I agree. And I disagree with it. I mean, I don't see it. He I mean, uh, I mean, you, I, you don't see the interest rate coming, even though Janet Yellen has given you know every I mean? indication. I, 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 I agree with Matthew that it could be a posturing type thing, right. but more or less. Optics. But, uh, you know, to me, it's like there's no rational decision making behind this. It's just well, the, the political optics are such that they want to show that the economy is strengthening ahead of the election year. All right, let's have the Democrats let's do this. Let's go around the horn one last point. time. We're going to talk about predictions for 2016. We'll start with Phil Ash in Washington, D.C. And Phil, how do you see 2016 shaping up uh, as far as Wall Street is concerned? Well, I think we're going to have another flat market, but there's going to be volatility from month to month. So it's a stock picker's market, uh, short-term trading opportunities. Uh, there will be pockets of value. You know, I mean, you look at oil, of course, everybody's looking at, uh, at the energy stocks, which have been so beaten down. Are they priced right or are they value traps? Um, so you're going to have to do your homework and really pick out which, uh, which are the value opportunities. But I think you're going to be able to get some nice short-term wins out of the volatility that's coming up. And okay. like I said earlier, if the interest rates do rise and there is forward guidance that they will continue to rise, then I think you will start to see the small and mid-cap stocks uh, accelerate their growth. All right, Phil Ash from C uh, CEO of Baton Investing, thank you very much. We have about a minute or so, so let's start with you, Steve. What do you see 2016 changing? I think we're gonna, there's a very strong possibility. As I stated uh, this year, April and May, I call for the market to drop down to 16,100, mm -hmm. and we got down to 15,300. And then I said in the fourth quarter of this year, we would erase the losses. I think what you're going to see in 2016, I think you're going to see a retest of those lows, potentially down to the 15,500. Really? Uh -huh. Yeah, I, my, that's what my work is showing me. Uh, I think also uh, what, what's going to fuel it is the slowdown in China. Uh, and I think you're going to see, again, uh, oil dropping and causing massive selling in the oil sector. That's going to warrant that, that move down. Then I do believe in the fourth quarter, because it is a presidential election year, I do believe that the market will have one more blip up towards the end of the year. Matthew. I think we're heading for a serious recession. The commodity complex is showing that. You're saying With, a recession? Yeah, serious recession. I think we undercut mm -hmm. last year's lows uh, somewhat dramatically. <coughs> I think that oil, uh, all industrial commodities, copper, the, all of them, they're showing that industrial activity is slowing dramatically, and it's going to 
prove historically again to be a major leading indicator. I think a lot of people would be surprised that you would say that, but I'll respect that obviously. <coughs> and Jason. S since I was in mortgages, I mm -hmm. always said that there has to be some kind of a bond collapse, which we haven't really seen the bond market completely collapse. Right. And I think we're starting to see the high yield uh, creep in. Great point. And if you looked in the 90s when the NASDAQ collapsed, the Dow was right behind it. Um, I really think we need to focus on the bond market and pay more attention to that more than anything. I think 2016 will be a flight to quality. I think there'll still be a lot of opportunities. I, I think the days of FANG are over where you can buy Facebook, Apple, right. Netflix, and Google, and right. your portfolio's up 70% for no reason. I think people are gonna have to pay a lot closer attention to price to earnings multiples and stay away from indexes. Okay, gentlemen, thank you very much. We appreciate your time. When we come back on Fresh Outlook, all of you, we're gonna be talking about hateful speech in America. We'll be right back.